the fastest jet of its age, the first Mach 2 capable plane, designed by the lauded Skunk Works engineer Kelly Johnson, the man behind the SR-71 Blackbird. The hopes and pride of a nation rested on the shoulders of a giant of the aircraft industry, but something went wrong. It was abandoned by the US Air Force shortly after its introduction. How did this revolutionary jet go wrong so fast? The true reason was actually much more sinister. It would go on to become one of the deadliest airplanes to ever take to the skies. Not to the enemy, but rather to its own pilots. Killing 116 men in Germany alone. The Flying Coffin. The Widowmaker. From worldwide scandal to countless deaths, this is the story of the F-104 Starfighter. In November of 1951, Kelly Johnson made a trip to South Korea to find out what issues the pilots engaged in that war had been experiencing. The MiG-15s had been deployed by the Soviet Union and had proven to be capable, fast fighters. The American pilots needed a basic, high-speed, high-altitude fighter to compete, not the heavy, complex planes that they had. Johnson hit it home, and in short order, his team came up with a new design. This new vision was to be a stripped-down, high-powered plane with one focus in mind. In the air of the swept wing, Johnson went with a unique and radical approach. The F-104 was equipped with small, mid-mounted wings with an edge so sharp it could cut skin. On the ground, it was a safety issue and had to be covered to prevent serious injury. This lightweight, aerodynamic fighter was to be the first production plane to reach the dizzying speeds of Mach 2. So, would need an engine with matching high thrust output. Just a single General Electric J79 turbojet engine was selected with an output of 17,900 pounds. Almost from the onset of development, the Starfighter started to hint at serious issues. It was equipped with a downward firing ejection seat, and it was felt that the tail was too high for the seat to clear. While this might have sounded like a logical choice, it didn't take into account the risks associated with takeoffs or low altitude. This one consideration led to the deaths of over 21 US Air Force pilots. The cockpit was so tight that pilots wore spurred shoes which attached their feet to their seats. When the ejection release was pulled, their feet would be pulled back and clear of the panel. To exacerbate the issue, the new J-79 engines, when left parked in the sun, would register a false overheat condition and shut down their compressors on takeoff. The Pro F-104 wasn't off to a great start, and it was only to get worse. Early flights discovered another problem. When the angle of attack went above 15 degrees, the Starfighter had a tendency to suddenly pitch up to over 60 degrees. This led to violent rolling and yawing. Essentially, it was tumbling out of control. It wasn't all doom and gloom, however. The intended purpose of a day fighter with massive speed and altitude was achieved. The F-104 would go on to set both speed and altitude records. But these achievements came at a price. Though it proved to be very stable at high speed, the sacrifices Johnson had made to achieve this proved to be a double-edged sword. In a dogfight, speed and maneuverability are key to victory. While the F-104 had the speed figured out, it had done so at the sacrifice of maneuverability. Its short, sharp wings were brilliantly designed to reach stratospheric heights and speeds, but left it vulnerable in the turn. Its turn radius was abysmal, coining the phrase, banking with intent to turn. But this wasn't the only speed sacrifice that was made. It had a takeoff speed of 330 to 370 kilometers an hour. In fact, the speed was so high that the landing gear had to be immediately retracted, otherwise it could be sheared off. The high speed also carried on to the landing requirements. It would land at close to 300 kilometers an hour, still at high power. Cutting the engines while airborne was generally not recommended, as it would lead to an abrupt loss of lift. As the US Air Force doctrine was changing at the time, the F-104 suddenly found itself without pilots. Not only did it have a difficult conception, but now Lockheed needed to find buyers for its unique day fighter. The F-104 would continue to be operated for almost another 50 years in the air forces of countries around the world. But how did a plane with such a host of issues become successful in foreign armed forces? And how did Lockheed pull off this deal of the century? Though many modifications and changes were made over its years of service, it never did become the poster child of a new generation of fighters. 
So how did Lockheed market and sell it so successfully that over two and a half thousand planes were built? The truth is a dark and seedy story in fact. West Germany's new Luftwaffe were a relatively young and inexperienced force. Having been disbanded since the end of World War II, little had been done to keep up with advancing technologies and aircraft. The learning curve was steep. Lockheed customized the F-104 into the F-104G for Germany. A large number of accidents were attributed to CFIT, controlled flight into terrain. The main reasons for this poor safety record was pilot strain due to the large technical requirements of the aircraft and also the increasingly different expectations made on the aircraft. It had evolved from a high-altitude day fighter to an all-weather, low-level fighter bomber. Though it would continue to have improvements and upgrades over its lifespan, it soon gained the title of Widowmaker. 292 aircraft of 916 ordered were destroyed in the course of its service in the West German Air Force. Pilot deaths became so common that wives of pilots feared seeing their husbands in black suits, for it meant another friend had been lost. But it wasn't all tragedy. Like a story from the Hallmark Channel, one F-104 made a perilous flight in impossible conditions and risked it all to save one little girl. January 22nd, 1982. A cold, frozen morning in Lower Germany. Over 1,000 kilometers away in Sardinia, the skies are bleak and the rain pours. A young girl, Jessica, is suffering from an illness which will claim her life in 24 hours. The only cure? A special medicine, but in Germany. The weather conditions make the trip impossible by land, even more so by air. Somehow, the German officials in charge come up with a radical plan. An F-104, piloted by one of the Luftwaffe's most experienced pilots, will deliver the life-saving medicine. In frozen conditions, a single runway is de-iced. The takeoff will be brutal and dangerous. The pilot, Jürgen Gundling, ignites the afterburner and cleanly leaves the airfield. Officials are frantically requesting permissions for this supersonic fighter to cross international borders en route to Sardinia. The conditions here are no better. Visibility is so low that ground vehicles take to the airfield to light the runway. In a show of adept flying, Jürgen lands the aircraft successfully. The medicine is is retrieved and Jessica's life is saved. Though there are rays of light in the F-104's existence, it never lived up to the dreams of its designers. In fact, the F-104 was about to go from failure to an absolute disaster. The question was posed earlier. If the Starfighter was such a poor performing aircraft, how was it that Lockheed seemingly did the impossible and made it a marketing and financial success? The truth would come to light in 1975. It's simply intolerable that these agreements should not be made public. Senator Frank Church caught a hint that not everything going on with Lockheed appeared to be above board. Was the so-called deal of the century really just that? As he dove deeper into the financial background of deals made by Lockheed at the time, including the Starfighter, he was to uncover a rat's nest of allegations, bribes, and even coercion. It slowly all came tumbling down as it was discovered that Lockheed had paid $10 million to West German Minister of Defense, Franz Josef Strauss, to secure the Starfighter contract. Though he never admitted guilt, the German documents that have proven this were found to have been destroyed. In the Netherlands, Prince Bernhard had received over 1.1 million to choose the F-104 over the Dassault Mirage 5. As the scandal boiled over, heads began to roll. Key management in Lockheed admitted to the bribery charges and stepped down. Kelly Johnson was so disgusted by what the company he worked for had done that he almost resigned. The far-reaching repercussions of this enormous scandal led for the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act being signed into law by President Jimmy Carter. I'll never tell a lie. I'll never make a misleading statement. Making it illegal for American citizens to bribe foreign government officials. Though it wasn't the end of the F-104, its reputation was beyond recovery. From its poor safety record to political scandal, the F-104 would go down in history as a brilliant failure. In fact, the Dutch even used it to end a hostage situation in 1977. Nine men had taken 50 people hostage on a train in the Netherlands. After almost three weeks, the Dutch Marines prepared to storm the train by force. However, prior to this, they sent six F-104s overhead in full afterburner to disorientate and confuse the hostages. It worked, and the situation was ended with minimal loss of life.
Perhaps it had been doomed from the beginning. Early in its life, General Electric had an XB-70, an F-4 and 5, T-38 Falcon and the Starfighter fly in formation for a pitcher event. Tragedy was to strike when the F-104 drifted into the wingtip of the XB-70, causing it to flip inverted and roll over the back of the XB-70 Valkyrie and tear off its vertical stabilizers. The Starfighter exploded mid-air, while the XB-70 crash-landed shortly after. The pilot of the Starfighter and the co-pilot of the Valkyrie both lost their lives that day. Though the F-104 is now relegated to an infamous place in history, Let's not forget that during its heyday, it set the world records for altitude and speed at 120,800 feet and 1,429.3 miles per hour. An amazing piece of engineering designed in the Skunk Works, its misuse and failures led to its eventual inglorious end. Though it is no longer with us today, its heritage lives on and flies on to this day in the form of the U-2, who borrows its fuselage from the Starfighter. The Widowmaker, missile with a man in it, and Lawn Dart, the F-104 Starfighter, the fastest plane of its era. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Next time, the world's first jetliner, the de Havilland Comet, was crashing, and no one knew why.